Now a News 8 exclusive. The war of words is escalating now between MGM and the two Connecticut tribal casinos, with both sides sending letters over the last two days to state and legislative leaders. It comes after the first part of News 8 investigator George Colley's exclusive interview with the chair of MGM International Tuesday night. Tonight, in part two, George reports on the political battle brewing. The idea of gaming here in the state is not well understood. Jim Murren says the biggest challenge he faces when pushing for a new project is overcoming a lack of information or misinformation related to the gaming and entertainment industry. And he says it's no different here in Connecticut. It's not understood when Congress passed the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act. It's not understood what the compact is with the two tribes here. Um, it's not understood you know, what the benefits have been uh, and what they will be. Murren wants to build a $675 million privately financed resort and casino at Bridgeport's Steel Point Harbor. Polling shows the majority of Bridgeport residents support the project, but that could put the hundreds of millions of dollars that come into the state each year from Foxwoods and Mohegan Sun in jeopardy. I'm not opposed to the Pequot tribe or the Mohegan Sun tribe. Uh, I wish them all the best. What I am trying to do is have an adult conversation uh, about the realities of commercial gaming in the state of Connecticut. News 8 aired the first part of the interview with Jim Murn on Tuesday night. The next day, the tribes wrote a letter to state leaders, including the governor, emphasizing they would like to be involved in any further discussion about a future casino in Bridgeport. The tribes reiterated that a deal with MGM could put the nearly 25-year-old exclusivity compact in jeopardy. It's a deal that's allowed the tribes to be the sole gambling operators in the state in exchange for 25% of the slot revenue generated. It stumped the state coffers with more than $7 billion. The state legislature approved an agreement allowing the tribes to build a joint casino in East Windsor, all in an effort to keep Connecticut gamblers on this side of the border when MGM opens its billion-dollar resort and casino in nearby Springfield, Massachusetts next year. MGM followed that letter up with one of their own earlier Thursday, saying they welcome the tribes being a part of any Bridgeport discussion. If we were suggesting we're going to, you know, convert a movie theater and put slot machines in it, hypothetically, um, or uh, some table games, uh, then Bridgeport should say no. Murren's swipe at the tribe's East Windsor plan was followed with a promise of transforming the city of Bridgeport, bringing thousands of direct and indirect jobs and much more develop a diversified resort that will drive convention business, tourism to Connecticut, that will drive entertainment, that would help energize uh, Webster Arena and the amphitheater and help the other uh, arts community uh, uh, activities in the community. Well, that's a different proposition. That means that what we're trying to develop is a resort, uh, not a slot box. MGM is at it again. The tribes believe MGM has no real plans to open a casino in Bridgeport and are running a new ad using Mern's own words from an investor call this fall. Springfield, Massachusetts will be the home of our newest property and our last major development project here in the United States. Connecticut isn't getting an MGM casino. Connecticut's getting played. Burns says he can't tell investors about a project until it gets approved. Uh, I can only go where I'm allowed to go. And right now, um, I don't have a project in Connecticut because it's not legal for me to have a project. I have an idea, I have an aspiration, and I hope to have a project. It's a war of words we haven't heard the end of. It should dominate the political and legislative conversation in 2018. George Colley, News 8.